Okay, good evening. Uh, quite a lot less this time. Interesting, because the topic is about what you're really here to do, research. Uh, that we've got the smallest group so far. We'll see what, how we go with when we talk about careers. Maybe you're less interested in that. Anyway, uh, today's topic is research techni techniques and tools. And I am, I'm doing a little experiment. I'm trying to record what's on the screen and what I'm saying so that for those who aren't, couldn't make it see things, there'll at least be a, a video afterwards. So the notes for today uh, are in there. Basically what I'm going to do is not so much make a presentation today as, as take you on a tour of the internet to show you various things that I found useful and hope you find useful as well when you're doing your research. I will also introduce you to a very important place on campus, which is the library. Uh, it's not just a coffee shop, it is uh, a place of learning. So I'll introduce you to what's in the library and how you can make best use of the library. Uh, and I'll also give you one or two hints about maybe how you should keep records, document what you're doing, so that when you come to write up, you'll have sufficient information. So this is going to be a slightly different type of presentation, as I said. Now, I'm using a, a web-based tool here called Pearl Trees, which is a way of... Uh, curating inter interesting links that you find on the internet. I find it particularly useful for this presentation. As you'll see in a minute, it just basically will allow us to take a little tour around the web um, to look at various aspects to do with this research techniques and tools. I want to start off by uh, just mentioning... Uh, it's not quite what I expected to see there, but never mind. Um, what I'm going to start off by showing you are some, some sort of basic tools that you, you might find useful. First one of these is a decent web browser. Um, I don't think Internet Explorer is a decent web browser. I don't know if you agree or not. But uh, certainly for some of the tools I'm going to be demonstrating, particularly tools for, for picking up bookmarks and things off the Internet, the... Uh, the Firefox or Chrome browser will probably be better for you than Internet Explorer. So my first tool of the evening I want to introduce you to is Firefox. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it, but if you haven't got it installed, I would, I would install it uh, straight away on your own machine. The second little subtopic I want to talk about is... Maybe not so relevant these days. I'm not, I see there's one or two laptops in the room. Does anybody have a, a tablet? Like an iPad or a, something like that? Anybody got one of those? All got smartphones? Some of you, maybe. Um, what I'm going to show you now is a way of uh, taking your favorite uh, tools with you well, as you move around campus so you can always have your favorite browser and your favorite... Uh, uh, databases and so on with you. Uh, one, this is not maybe so relevant these days because I think Firefox is on the engineering computers already, but it didn't used to be. So what I'm going to first of all introduce you to is what I'm calling a portable toolbox. Oh, sorry, I <coughs> pressed the wrong button there, which I will just demonstrate very quickly. If this this is only really relevant if you have a Windows machine. Fortunately, what I'm going to show you now doesn't doesn't work on a Mac, so I can't demonstrate it to you because I've got a Mac as well. But this is a little tool that uh, you install upon, on, a, on a flash drive, and it basically adds an extra start menu to your machine when you plug it in, and it will work on any machine you have access to. So you can take it around, plug it into any machine, say in the library or in the, in the PC labs in engineering, and it will give you access to your favorite set of tools. Um, in particular, it will give you access to a portable version of the browsers, <coughs> such as Google Chrome or Firefox. So those, that's a very useful little application if you, uh, if you don't like carrying your laptop around, but you want to have access to your favorite bits of software, that's a useful way of going. 
Uh, most of the tools available for this platform are the ones that are open source. So open source tools like Firefox browsers, um, various uh, email clients, etc. You can install on, on your thing and take them with you. Open Office, etc., etc. <laughs> and the other big tool that I'd like to recommend to you, and this is something you will need uh, Firefox installed to use, which is why I mentioned Firefox, is a very useful bibliographic database tool called Zotero. And this actually is a extension. It, it installs itself inside Firefox. And what it does, I can't really demonstrate it to you, but what it does is, as you visit websites, as you visit uh, collections of papers, etc., on the internet, you can click a button and it will add a record for that website into a, into a bibliographic database, which is different from a bookmark. A bibliographic database has information that you will need to produce a bibliography at the end of the process. So this is a very useful uh, tool. I'll give you one or two more possibilities later, but I would certainly recommend, strongly recommend that you have a go with, with this if you're using Firefox. It doesn't work with Chrome, it doesn't work with Safari, it doesn't work with Internet Explorer, only with Firefox at the moment. The other thing about it is that you can see there's a little button here, Sync, it will actually keep a copy of your bibliographic database in the cloud, in the, on, the, on the website somewhere in the, in the cloud, so that you can always have access to it wherever you are. So not only do you have to carry it around with you, you can also keep it on the, on the network, so you have access to it everywhere. So that's very useful. In co collaboration with the Portable Toolbox, um, you, you'll be all set then to, to follow along with what I'm going to suggest next. <coughs> okay, so really what, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna, I've got several topics to go through. There was a title slide somewhere, but I, I must have skipped over it. I'm going to start off by showing you around the library in a virtual sense. I'm sure mo a lot of you will have already seen the uh, library resources on the, on the internet. But just to make, sh just in case you haven't, I'm going to point out one or two useful ones. Uh, after I've done that, I'm going to talk about uh, methods of, of curating things that you find as you do your research. So a bibliographic database handling is the main one of those that I want to stress. I'm going to show you some tools for uh, reflecting on what you've found, uh, ways we can make notes or whatever and keep them on the, on the cloud as well, if you wish. I'm going to uh, suggest ways of, of collaborating with other people, maybe a supervisor or other students taking a project. Uh, so I'm going to show you possibly how social networking and social networking tools might be useful <coughs> in research. And then I think I'm going to finish off by looking at uh, how you might write up and then back up your work as you go along. So all these tools that I'm going to go through and the techniques I'm going to mention are really just to help you do your research. I'm not going to tell you how to do research. Uh, I'm not necessarily qualified to do that, or your supervisor is better equipped to tell you how to do that. But I will hopefully give you some ideas of things you might want to look at later in order to you know, support yourself as you go through the process. This presentation, of course, is on Blackboard. You'll be able to go through it yourself in more detail later. Uh, and it, it has a very much, you'll be following the same interface I'm using here. So I didn't want to move on straight around. I just want to start off by then going into the library. And this is basically what I want to cover in this little subsection of the presentation. Uh, I'm going to uh, start off by introducing to what used to be called library and information services, now called information system services or something. ISS rather than LIS. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the new catalog, I find. You'll have used that probably to find books in the library, but you may not be quite so aware that there is a sister product, I find research, which you will find very useful for doing your literature review. Uh, I'll mention uh, some of the resources such as e-documents and things that you'll find 
as you go through the catalogue and through the research pages, I'll mention something called a subject gateway, which might give you a, a useful starting point, particularly if you're doing research in a sort of generic area of, of your topic. And then I'll, I'll introduce you to the, the library team who can help you uh, get started or give you advice on how to use the library resources. So you'll have seen this page before. This is the old uh, page. It still looks like this. What you're seeing here are actually live web pages, so they are actually live. And you will, you, you basically will see this page before. It might change a little bit as the web, new website gets uh, developed. Um, but you will, in particular, no, what I want to point out is the stuff along the side here. A lot of useful information is available to you by following these links along the side. And you've got quick jumps to the main features that I'm going to talk about later. I'm not going to talk about Blackboard. Blackboard is not really uh, part of this course. This is the, uh, the library services page, which shows you what's available, worth a visit. And from there, you would, you would go to the digital library, which is what I'm going to concentrate on. Digital library is the part of the library that you can access through a web browser uh, and, and get access to things like databases and subject, in your subject, etc. There's quite a lot of uh, uh, academic databases available to you from this research, this research page. It's not always easy to know where to start. And one of the beauties of I Find Research, the tool, is that it will search across all of these simultaneously for you. The other thing you will possibly come across as you start to use these tools is something called Athens, particularly if you are using these tools off campus. Um, if, you're, if you're in the library or in, in the College of Engineering and you're using the library services and you find a paper, say, in a, in a bibliographic database, you can usually just download it there and then. But if you are at home and doing it, you may have to log in with what's called an Athens account. So it's well worth visiting this page, the Athens uh, service page, just to make sure you know what your login is likely to be so that if you are accessing anything you need a password for off campus, you'll know what the username is. It's usually going to be your uh, student number at swansea.ac.uk and the password will be whatever your password normally is. But uh, it's worth checking that that works. And then I want to sort of very quickly introduce you to the two main uh, tools. Um, what I would say to you here and now is that Google is not your friend when it comes to doing research. Google is a very useful tool for finding stuff out about your favorite actor and actress or that kind of thing. But it's not really a reliable place to contact information if, you're, if you want to get information that is going to be acceptable to us in the dissertation. So you need to start to use more professional tools for getting those, that information. And that's where I find Discover and I find Research will come in particularly useful. The first of these, I find Discover, is basically the, the catalog. I think I've got a slide on it later in a minute. It gives you access to all the books, of course, but it also has access to some of the online journals that the library subscribes to, uh, things like research dissertations, MSc dissertations, etc. And, of course, all the media resources like DVDs and so on that the library has. You can get access to all of these things through the catalogue, and often, if you get to the catalogue, you can just download it there and then. Um, there are a number of uh, tools, a number of e-books now that the library has available to it, so you might do a catalogue search, and you might actually find that there's an online resource, an e-book version of the thing you're looking for, so you can just uh, access that usually for a PDF or something. Um, to, to get all that, and you can see there's a lot, quite a lot of uh, books and things that are available to us as e-books. And uh, then they come to the research page itself. I find research. This is very 
simple to use really. All you do is you do the obvious thing. If you've got a reading list, you type in the author and the title. Um, let's see if this can find anything from me. And it will uh, go away and look at a, lot, a bunch of online databases to see if it can find the reference. It takes a little bit of time. And when it's done, it'll give you the results. And you can often just download the paper or whatever electronically there and then. Still searching a couple of things. And there we've got a couple of results. These are papers that I've published on the subject of computer-aided control system design, for example. So once you've got it, if it's got this form, you can just click on that and it'll download the PDF and you've got access to it straight away. So that's a very useful tool. Um, if it doesn't quite give you the results you want, you can go a bit deeper and use the, the individual databases um, themselves. In addition to the sort of professional search tools, if you like, there are other tools which are recommended by the library. Uh, as you can see, it classifies Google and its brethren as, Bing I suppose would fit into that category as well, as general search tools as opposed to academic search tools. There are a number of other things like uh, meta search tools and country specific tools and all this kind of thing. You can certainly look into those if you want to find anything in particular. Of the Google family, the only the only tool we recommend really is this one, Google Scholar, which is uh, www.google.co.uk slash scholar. And this is a search engine which just looks at academic research papers, not at the general internet. And so articles you find from Google Scholar are likely to be a little bit more um, authoritative and, uh, what's the word, acceptable than other things that you would find just by doing a general Google search. So again, if I do a search for something using Google Scholar, it comes up with a bunch of stuff. And you can notice these are actual papers. It tells you how, how many people were cited and where you might get it from. If it says, I get it at swansea.university, it means you can download it straight away. So that's a useful thing to look out for in these kinds of results. The other, the other slight class is, is what we call subject gateways. These are, these are basically uh, links that have been put together by librarians to help people find things. Librarians, what, all, what librarians do is catalogue stuff, put things in the right categories, and that's what they basically do. And they've done that with certain parts of the internet, uh, and you can get access to those things through subject gateways. There's a number of them listed on the library site. I'm just going to show you a, a couple of examples. This was one that unfortunately has just closed down uh, called Intuit. It uh, was a service that was funded by JISC, which is the, comp which is the body that funds uh, IT in, in, in universities. Uh, unfortunately, the funding ran out this July with all the cuts and everything. And so this site is no longer being updated but it still has a lot of links, which might, and it might be a useful place to start. You can see the difference between this and a, and a search engine is it basically it's organized by category. So you can see there's agriculture, architecture, biological sciences, and so on, engineering. Uh, I think sports science is under, uh, where is, I, I did find it the other day. Where, where, I don't know quite what, physical sciences now, psychology maybe. Um, there's, a, there's a few links for spot science there as well. And if you go into engineering, you'll see that engineering is further categorized into topic. So if you were doing a project in aerospace, you could follow down to the aerospace and find lots of resources which would be useful to an aerospace engineer or a chemical engineer or a spot scientist, etc. As I say, this particular resource is, is no longer being updated but it, is, uh, it still has some useful links available to it. Another, another part of the Intuit suite of things was this useful set of websites, Virtual Training Suite. These were created basically to help students like yourselves to 
learn how to find resources in their area of interest. So there are tutorials, this is the engineering page, there are tutorials on various parts or subjects, they, uh, for example, aeronautical engineering. Uh, there's also these other tools. This Internet Detective helps you to decide whether or not a resource you find on the Internet is, is reliable. So it's useful to go through those kinds of things. There's also audio and images and video. And uh, so you might find this a useful starting point as well for exploring. This is really the sort of thing you do in the library when you go down the shelves and actually look at the bookshelves, see if there's anything that strikes your eye. It's more of that kind of approach to finding things than searching for something. But one advantage of just looking on the shelves is that you often come across something you wouldn't have otherwise come across. Uh, so that, that element of what's called serendipity, of actually coming across something just by accident, is something you would miss out on if you just completely concentrated on using search. And for that reason, I would also recommend you actually go into the library at some point and browse the bookshelf in your topic if you might find something useful there. <laughs> if you get stuck at all in the library, these guys pictured here are, are the people who can help you. This is the engineering subject librarian team. These are the people who actually look after engineers. Uh, they mostly concentrate on postgrads, but really they can look at any, after any student who's doing a research dissertation of any kind. And they can give you useful guides to where things are in the library, how to use certain databases in the library. Uh, and they're happy to help uh, give you advice on how to do bibliograph bibliographies and that kind of thing. They're not going to actually do your bibliography for you. They're not necessarily going to find the thing you're looking for for you, but they will certainly point you in the right direction. So it's useful to know these people. You'll often see one, or, one, or, one of them sitting in the help desk in the library because they take it in turns to do that job. It's a, it's a useful group of people to get to know. It's uh, Susan Glenn is here. This is Alistair Montgomery. And this is Rebecca Kelleher, I think. I can't quite see the text. is not very big on this screen. Useful people to know. And there's also some additional information for help there. The other thing I want to point out to you, and we'll come back to this later, is uh, there's a lot of help in the library pages about how to do bibliographies and that kind of thing. How to store your results, etc. We'll see some more of those in a minute, but uh, we will come back to those pages when we do the briefing on writing up and, and referencing later in the year. This is one other page I wanted to point out. I, this, I expected this page to be first, but it's come out last, nearly. Uh, this is a, a page giving you basically links to all the books in the library which are about study skills. I don't know if you've ever read any of these, but there are a number of things that are appropriate to know about as someone starting on a project. For example, time management, how to do critical reading, uh, how to write essays and reports, particularly science and engineering reports, which are slightly different from other kinds of reports. There's guides and books on writing a dissertation and there's lots of guides on writing references. One of the most common questions I get asked is how do I do my bibliographic reference? Um, these, these books will help you help yourselves with that and there's also some stuff on, on making oral presentations. Some of the other things here such as group work are not quite so relevant but there is a, a section on research as well about uh, how, how research is typically done and how you could do make the best use of research skills. So that's a useful page to know about, the good study skills page. And a lot of these books are in the library just in front of the careers desk. There's a bookshelf just in front of the careers desk in the library. And there's a number of books on study skills in that bookshelf, so it's worth having a little browse in there. Next time you're in Costa for a coffee or something, just have a quick look. And there's a larger collection in the library itself, but they're sort of dotted about all over the place. Okay, and uh, this is another thing that I just wanted to point out to you. This is a page that the librarian people have set up. This is a, uh, a system called PageVibe. I'm going to show you again in a minute. And this is, again, this has been set up by the library services. 
as a more dynamic way of updating information about our research and the latest techniques, etc. Um, <coughs> this, because it's not a static website, this is more likely to be up to date than the, the actual physical uh, library web pages. Again, you can see the librarian staff there, a number of things, search tools, theses, etc. Aimed, I suppose, at postgraduates, but a lot of what postgraduates do is is what you're going to you're going to do as well in a small in a small scale. So, a lot of it is relevant to you also. So, well worth a visit uh, as well. That that particular page. Okay, so that was the library. Uh, we'll, we'll have another little wander around the library in a minute. But uh, the next thing that's going to be very important to you as you go along, particularly as you start to use the library and start gathering references and things, is keeping good records, keeping good notes about how you, uh, what you find. And I'm a big fan of keeping my notes on the internet because I can, I can always have access to it then wherever I am to be, whichever machine I happen to be sitting at. So a lot of what I'm going to show you now are sort of web-based ways of keeping notes as opposed to the traditional way of just keeping a document on your laptop. Oops, I keep pressing the wrong button. So let's have a quick look here in this section. So I'm going to start off by talking about bibliographic data, the most important uh, record you will need to keep. And the earlier you start doing this, the better, really. Um, there's also a possibility for electronic note taking. You have got a logbook, uh, so you can keep notes in your logbook. Some of you may prefer also to keep some notes in electronic form. Uh, so that's uh, also useful. But the, the main thing I want to get across here is the bibliographic data is very important right from the start to be collecting this information because it's, very, it's often time-consuming and difficult to get it later you know you've read this paper, it was useful to you, but you never made a note of it, and now you've got to find it again when you're writing up. If you've got it in a bibliographic database, it's just a question of choosing it and, and popping it in the document. So there's a whole section in the library, again, in the library, digital library pages. This is in the help and guide section on bibliographic referencing. I've already been asked which style to use. I think sports scientists are expected to use the Harvard style. In engineering, we, we don't really care, or I don't really care. Some supervisors may have a preference. I would recommend either the Harvard style or the numeric style, Each, either one of those. Footnotes is not something engineers or scientists do. Okay, so it tells you how, how those typically look. You're not too worried at this stage about how the bibliography is actually going to look when it's printed, but you are interested in capturing enough information about the sources that you can actually produce that bibliography later. The URL is not enough. You've got to have the author, the date, when it was published, who it was published by, and all this kind of information as you go along. Which is why Zotero is a useful tool, because it captures a lot of that information, or at least prompts you for it as you, as you go along. So there's, there's a lot of resources on bibliographic referencing on the, date, on the library. A couple of tools I recommend. This is the one which they recommend, uh, if you go over there, they will say you, you should use EndNote. EndNote is a bibliographic database. Its disadvantage is that it has to be installed on a machine, on a computer. So it's not really accessible to you as you move around college or, or work on, on campus if you don't have your laptop with you all the time. It's also not free. I think you have to pay for a license if you want to install it on your own machine. So that, that's going to be off-putting to a lot of people straight away. There are free, free variations of it, but perhaps not as good. There's a version of EndNote which lives on the web, called EndNote Web, which might be good enough for you. I think that one is free. You do have to register, though, and sign up for an account to be able to use it. The tools that I particularly like are, are web-based. Uh, Zotero I've already mentioned it lives in a browser um, Mendeley is a, a completely online service it's a sort of social 
bibliographic referencing site, if you like. Um, and another one is called Site You Like. So I'll give you a quick view of those. There's a Zotero we already mentioned. Installs as a plug-in to your browser. Mendeley is a website you log into, in an account, and you can store your bibliographic databases. You get a little bookmarklet thing that sits in your browser and you click it and it, and it stores it on the, on the database. Limited to how many records you can store, I think, for a free account. But it shouldn't be a, it, it shouldn't be a limit for you. Most of you won't get over the limit, I wouldn't have thought. Another similar service, web-based again, is Site You Like. This has been developed by one of the big publishers, Elsevier, I think. And it works in a similar way. You browse things, click a button, and it puts a bibliographic database onto the internet for you. And you can get back to it later. And you can also share with other people. And another one that I, I just came across yesterday is Conatier. I don't know much about it, apart from it's another one that's mentioned on the library web services. So I've put a link in to it. All of these services basically, st the last three put your bibliographic information on the internet where you can access it from a web browser. Uh, EndNote keeps a little database on your machine itself. But the, it's very important to, uh, to try one of those and find one you like and then use it. Another possibility that I, I quite like myself, it's not really quite as uh, academically sound perhaps as uh, some of the other features, is, is what's called social bookmarking. Uh, you may have come across this already, but uh, if you haven't, there's a little video on this presentation that you can watch, and it'll tell you a little bit about it. And the idea of this is that instead of just bookmarking things in your browser and uh, having to uh, basically have the browser with you when you want to look at it next, it will actually allow you to store things and share them with other people, possibly your supervisor or other people who are doing projects with you. A couple of uh, tools that I'm going to mention. Uh, Daigo is one that does this. I'm, I'm moving more towards this myself because the other one that's available has, has so disappeared. This is, a, this is my Daigo site for this particular top program. You can see that I've got references that re re related to this presentation there. Uh, another tool like that is uh, Delicious which I think I had a slide for, but it seems to have gone, gone by without showing it on the screen. Um, so social bookmarking, good way of keeping references, again, online, so you don't, you don't lose them. The other, the other sort of tools I'm going to mention very quickly are sort of for note-taking. Again, they're portable, so you can take them around with you. TiddlyWiki is an online wiki that runs inside a browser, stores a file on your disk, and allows you to take notes. If you're in that, into that kind of thing, it might be useful to you. Uh, an alternative to that is something similar to um, OneNote. If you have Office Professional, you might have come across this OneNote program in that. Uh, Zoho Notebook is similar to that, except that, again, it keeps the notes on the Internet. You can you know, keep web pages, images, videos, your own scribbles, etc., on, on, online with those. And the beauty of most of those tools is that you can actually use them as you actually browse the internet, finding stuff. So that's why I'm re recommending in particular you don't have a, have a separate program where you copy and paste links into or type into a separate word processor. It's all in the same, basically in the same browser, which I find myself very convenient. So that's uh, keeping notes and finding references. The next thing to do is to keep up to date with stuff. Uh, you're probably all working in fairly fast-changing topics, and it's likely that something will be published later in this year which you won't come across in your first trawl through the references. So the next set of, tool, set of techniques and tools are to do with basically making sure you keep up to date with things. And I'm going to introduce you to some particular features that I, I use myself quite a lot. RSS, RSS feeds... RSS readers and information portals. Uh, anyone familiar with an RSS feed here? No, not, uh, not really, maybe. So, um, I don't know why I've got Twitter there. 
Oh yeah, I know why I've got Twitter there. Twitter is there because if you follow certain people who might be logging in, the, in your area of interest, they may occasionally post useful links. So I, I put Twitter in there because following academics as opposed to following film stars can often give you useful leads. Following me, for example, might be useful. Uh, we've also got Facebook. Um, more and more people are using Facebook as a way of broadcasting information. You'll have come across these like pages before. Uh, we've got a like page for this project, which you, some of you have already uh, joined, I, I notice. Um, this is, this, things like that are perhaps useful ways of be, becoming aware of what's happening on the project itself. And maybe there may be one or two people who are using it in, in the academic sense. There's a slide here, I thought seems to have disappeared, so I'll, I'll move on from there. So following uh, things like Twitter and Facebook is one way of, of keeping up to date. The other way of keeping up to date is to use what are called RSS feeds. Uh, most online resources these days, including academic publications and so on, publish uh, RSS feeds, which basically are updated every time something new appears on, on a website. You'll have come across these perhaps if you, if you uh, have been to a, visited a site on the internet. You'll see a little orange semicircle thing appears here, and you can click on it in, in the Add a Subscription. This little video will explain what it is, so you can watch that uh, in a minute when you get home later. Um, missed again, I keep losing a few slides here. Once you've got your RSS feeds, then what you want to do is bring them to you in an easy way so you can quickly scan and see what's new. So, and there's a couple of ways of doing this, so-called RSS feed readers. iGoogle is one of those. Uh, you can bring an RSS feed into iGoogle. PageFlakes is another. Oh, I know what the, other one, the first one was, probably Google Reader. Uh, it doesn't show up inside this, this application. PageFlakes is one. You bring your RSS feeds into these little squares and you can quickly look and see what's new in your topic. Uh, another one is NetVibes. We saw the libraries using NetVibes for the engineering postgraduate resources. Now, all these things are free to sign up to and you can subscribe to things like academic feeds and so on and they'll bring them into you uh, so you can visit this, your home page basically and see what's new very quickly. So a useful set of tools for you to be aware of. Another one is Symbaloo which brings in things in these little boxes like that. So the number of, of ways of identifying useful places where information is available to you, getting an RSS feed and putting it into one of these RSS feed readers, presenting it to you as somewhere where you can go and visit regularly and, and keep up to date that way. Better than filling your mailbox, certainly, with, with stuff. So that's uh, keeping up to date. The next thing, topic I want to talk about is reflecting on your work. Something you probably do uh, quite naturally, but uh, some ideas about how you might improve that. Reflection. Basically what I'm talking about here is thinking about what you've read and, and trying to put it into a form that will eventually go into the dissertation uh, as, as well-formed, well-critically argued uh, ideas. Ways of developing some of those ideas are blogging. I quite like blogging myself. I'll show you my blog in a minute. Sharing, getting comments from other people by sharing stuff with them, is another way of doing it. And social networks are very useful for, for developing an area of interest and getting people commenting on what you found and getting stuff from them as well. So all these things are very useful. You'll have used social networks, I'm sure, for social stuff, but they can also be very useful for work-related and academic stuff too. And a lot of academics these days do use social networks in a professional sense. This is a, a useful uh, starting point for the question, why blog? This is a blog from one of my uh, uh, colleagues, uh, a biochemi bio biochemist, I think, at uh, University of Leicester, a guy called Alan Kahn. He's, uh, he's, he does a lot of blogging, a lot of sharing. Uh, he's part of my personal network. And this is a, his explanation of why he blogs. And those reasons are as good as any reasons for why you should blog as well, even if you keep it to yourself. 
Uh, to aid you in getting into this, I've created a new blog today called Research Tools and Techniques. Um, I, I, I actually created this myself today, and here I will post various bits and pieces I come across to do with research. You're what, invited to come along and comment, and I'll also post updates to the links periodically as, as we go, go along through the course. So that might be a useful place to subscribe to and get an RSS feed from. This is my blog. Um, I use a blog. I blog about all kinds of things related to teaching and, and my interests outside university. Um, so you're welcome to come and subscribe to my blog. I'll show you all a great time. If you want your own blog, the university has a, a blogging server. You can actually just sign in and, and get your own blog. It's a WordPress multi-user blog. You can just sign in and get access to one of those if you wish. That's blog.swan.ac.uk. If you prefer to blog away from, from the university, there are a number of opportunities. You can blog with Blogger, a Google service. You can use WordPress. You can use Twitter if you can only really think in, in under 40 character sentences. You can also, uh, there are alternatives, sort of microblog type things like Posteris or Posterus. You can blog with Posterus just with an email account, just send emails to a, a certain address and you, you've blogged. Or Tumblr is a popular blog. You might come across uh, people using Tumblr blogs. You can share pictures, links. Uh, whatever, uh, very simple to set up and, and all free. Just a place to put stuff so you can come back later and think about it and maybe expand your ideas as you go along. The other useful tool, I think, is social bookmarking. I'm trying to encourage you to engage in social bookmarking. I've made all the bookmarks for this presentation available to you in a group in this social bookmarking tool, Daigo. This is the group. You can come along and sign up to Daigo and then join this group. And then you can also post your resources or comment on mine and uh, build a community around shared links and things that we might find and help me make this presentation more useful to students next year, for example. So that's, so that's one aspect of social bookmarking, sharing bookmarks and commenting on them. And I would encourage you to uh, engage with me there. Social networking itself is a useful research technique, particularly if you've got a, a group of like-minded people you can sort of advi get advice from and whatever. You can easily set up a group in, page, in, in Facebook, maybe just you and your supervisor if you like, or you and a few mates, and you can talk about the project, you can talk about a module or pro program, and you can basically gather information that way, very useful. Use Facebook for more than just making a date for the next booze up. Uh, Twitter is a useful way of building networks. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times. Um, it's also used uh, in, in sort of academic circles too. And the new kid on the block, Google Plus, uh, is another social network. It has an advantage in that you can create what they call circles, which are groups of people who you want to put in separate categories. So you don't just have friendship relationships. You can have relationships, say, with your supervisor, with your course mates, with your family. And you can have separate places where you share things. So that might be worth having a look at, Google+. Plus. So social networking, all very useful, I think, as a way of sharing stuff and getting, getting feedback from your peers and other people about what you're doing. If you feel comfortable in doing that, some of you may not wish to put your thoughts and ideas out into the, into the world. But even if you're just keeping your own notes or your blog just private to yourself, it's a useful place to, to scribble your ideas down, maybe. So worth thinking about anyway. Uh, the, the, this will be more important later on when you come to write up, when you start writing up end of next term towards Easter time, you'll start wanting to put things... Uh, into a document. Obviously, most people will probably use a word processor like uh, Word, but there are online alternatives, so I'll just mention those in passing. Uh, wikis is one way of doing this. Um, 
you can collaborate perhaps with your supervisor with wikis that's maybe is it? you have a wiki on blackboard if you want to use it you can also create your own wiki there are various services this is one of them wet paint you can see it's mostly used for fan sites and that kind of thing but there's no reason why you couldn't set up a wet paint wiki for your project and get your supervisor to sort of visit from time to time if you like there's also some google tools Wherever you see a blank screen, it's probably a Google tool which is not showing up inside this presentation. If I, if I do that, we'll get to the real thing, and it's Google Docs in this case, uh, an online office suite, which uh, I find myself quite useful. There's, an, there's another one called Zoho, which has a similar feature. Basically, a set of word processor, spreadsheet, database, that all lives on, on, on the cloud and you can use with your iPad or your iPhone or your uh, laptop. So, but basically all you're doing is really just writing documents as you normally would, except that the files end up on the internet rather than in your, uh, on your desktop. Another option if you're using Office, there's a new product with Office called Office Live. It's basically just a cloud service. You can store your documents on the internet so that you know that they're going to be safe if your laptop crashes or anything like that. And again, you can share your documents with other people using that feature. Uh, another important tool is time management. And time management is something else you can do online if you wish. Of course, if you have a, a smartphone, you've probably got a calendar on it. Use it. Uh, make a record of all the deadlines. Make sure it beeps at you when you, something is due. If you prefer to use online tools, again, there are options. There's... Uh, that's an interesting place. Oh, I know why that's there. There's, uh, there are options, again, Google Calendar and, uh, and others that I'll show you in a minute. It's worth... I just thought I'd, I'd point this out to you because this is to do with time management as well. This is the so-called Assignment Survival Kit, or ASK. You may have seen links to it on the Blackboard site. Uh, this basically gives you some hints about how you might go about producing a document like a dissertation. So what you do with it is basically you put in when it starts, which is today, let's say it finishes on the 26th of the April 2012, and it calculates a schedule... And then basically it tells you, you know, by 24th of October, understand your assignment. By the 31st of October, how are you going to approach it? And it basically gives you a timeline spread out over that period of time available to you so you can sort of plan your progression towards a finished thesis. A useful, if, if, if a little gimmicky tool, but maybe you'll find it useful if you try that one out. It'll give you some idea of, of what you should be thinking about. Uh, Google Calendar, again, it's a Google tool, so it doesn't show up there. I use that for all my personal calendars. And uh, another useful tool I find is this one. Remember the milk? It's basically a, a to-do list, online to-do list, but also lives on your, on your iPhone. And so keeps you up to date with things that you, you need to do. So I, I, I particularly find combination of Google Calendar and this tool to be very useful to my own personal uh, time management. And the last, uh, I think, the last thing I want to talk about is also very important, if not vital, and that's backing up. That's making sure that you always got your documents available to you. One reason why I, I like to put a lot of stuff on the internet is that it's not like to disappear there. Um, Whereas if, you, if your hard disk fails or you lose your flash drive, that's it, it's gone. So we want you to make sure that you get into the habit of backing up regularly as you start to write your documents. Okay, you, you've, got your, you've got your database of references, etc. Make sure you've got a backup. And this is my recommended solution for backup. It's called Dropbox. It's a very nice tool. Basically what it does is you download it for your Windows or your Mac and it installs itself and it just basically creates a special folder called My Dropbox on your machine. And anything you put in that folder is automatically copied up to the internet. So as soon as you put anything into the folder, so you create a document in there, 
put a folder inside it called my dissertation, anything you put in that folder will be automatically backed up to the internet. And even better, it will be synced with any machine that you connect or you install Dropbox on. So it will be available on the internet, you can get to it through a web browser, but any machine you connect to Dropbox, it will also be automatically synced, including your mobile devices. So a very, very useful tool. It's also a very useful tool for sharing documents with your supervisor or with other people, perhaps. So well worth a look. It's free for up to two gigabytes of storage. But uh, I've never exceeded two gigabytes. I've been using it for about four years now. And it's, it's plenty. I keep all my important working documents on it. And I never, I've never lost anything. So it's a very useful facility. I would highly recommend it. There's a portable version. If you go along the route of having your portable tools on your USB flash drive, then there's also a portable version of Doc Dropbox will automatically update themselves as well. So that's all I wanted to say. Hope you've had some useful inspiration from that. Uh, what I've covered is the portable toolkit and the browsers. I've covered what's in the library, how to keep records, keeping up to date, reflecting, documenting time management and backing up. And of course, you can look at this presentation and, and explore the resources for yourself later. Next week, we've got a special. Next week is the last briefing of this term. And it's not going to be about the project. It's going to be about your career, future career and continuing professional development. We've got two guest speakers coming in. So it won't be me standing here. And hopefully there'll be a few of you here to welcome those guys and get something out of that. As I said, there's a screencast of this presentation. I'll make it available afterwards. Uh, thanks very much. See you next week. <laughs>